Hi friends. So now we begin with the discussion of the basic concepts of MRI. As you know, MRI stands for magnetic resonance imaging. So basically, we are going to be using the magnetic field, the external magnetic field, in order to orient our internal magnetic field, which is made up by the protons, which are all spinning on their axis, to align with the external magnetic field and then resonate. And that is how we generate the images, right? So we'll be talking about this in detail, but that is what magnetic resonance imaging basically stands for. It's a cross-sectional imaging modality and it is one of the best investigations that we have up our sleeves. It is something which has the highest soft tissue resolution, right? So if you want the highest soft tissue resolution, something that is invaluable to us when we are looking at different tumors and to characterize different tumors, the pathological nature of tumors, we are always going to go for MRI. It is something which is time consuming. So not very, very useful for emergencies. Again, not an investigation which is very readily available. It is one of the more expensive investigations that we have. But the biggest advantage that MRI offers is the resolution and the fact that there is no ionizing radiation that is associated with it. Okay. Just like CT, in MRI also we can generate different planes of images, right? So this is also a multi-planar investigation where I can have axial, coronal, sagittal. But unlike a CT, in which a 360 degree scan is acquired and reconstruction can happen in any plane that we want, in MRI, we basically have to acquire those individual planes, right? So basically, we have to acquire axial separately, coronal separately, sagittal separately, and then we have multiple sequences that we can basically do. So usually, a bunch of sequences are done together for any particular part. So what we shall be talking about is first the concept on which MRI works, then we'll be looking at multiple MRI sequences and then the thumb rules of the areas or the uh, pathologies or the diagnosis where MRI becomes very, very important. All right. So that should be the plan as far as the exams are concerned. Remember, the identification of different MRI sequences becomes very important, particularly for students who are targeting INICT. All right. So let's begin. So the concept behind MRI is something which is described as NMR which is nuclear magnetic resonance. So what happens? What is the meaning of this term that is nuclear magnetic resonance? So normally when we look at our body, this is how basically all of the protons are all spinning, right? So we have all of the protons which are spinning and we know that when any charged particle spins, it generates a small magnetic field around itself. So this is the magnetic field, right? So these are all the tiny magnetic dipoles that we have in our body, which are all randomly oriented. So what happens is as a result, the net magnetic vector becomes zero. We are not magnetic per se, right? We don't bump into metals or stuff, right? So basically, we are the net magnetic vector is zero. But when we apply an external magnetic field, what happens is all of these protons basically align either parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetic field. But in general, I do have a net magnetization, which is going to be along the external magnetic Field. So let's have a look at this image. So if Z is the axis of B0, which is the external magnetic field, we have this longitudinal magnetization vector, which is created along it, right? But this is not the way that we can actually generate our images. We cannot generate the images if the magnetic field is in the longitudinal plane. So what I need for an image generation is for this to become transverse. I need a transverse magnetization vector to generate images. So to flip this by 90 degree, we are going to apply radio frequency waves. So we are going to give the machine external radio frequency waves, which will flip it by 90 degree to generate this transverse magnetization vector, which will convert to the MRI signal, which is further converted to the MRI image, right? So this is a general principle on the basis of which uh, MRI works which is called nuclear magnetic resonance because we're dealing with the nucleus, the proton and magnetic resonance is what we are trying to achieve. Okay. So this is about MRI image generation. This is what the MRI machine looks like, right? So you can see basically that this is the tunnel that the patient is going to go into. Obviously, this is not an Indian MRI uh, setup. We won't have such pretty looking uh, surroundings. So basically, this is what we have. So this is where the patient is going to lie. And this is the entire tunnel in which the patient goes 
uh, and sometimes the MRI machine can get pretty loud, all right? So it can get pretty loud, which is basically because of this gradient coil here that is a part of the magnetic uh, structure, and um, that is why one of the relative contraindications is claustrophobia. So you would uh, know that a lot of claustrophobic patients do not do very well with the MRI machine. That becomes a relative contraindication because of this shape. All right. So how the MRI coils are generated? So you have the primary magnetic coil, you have the gradient coil, and you have the RF coils. Right. So basically, RF coil is what is going to supply the radio frequency waves. The gradient coil is going to be applied in the plane. Right. So it will decide the plane that we want to acquire, and this is the external magnetic coil. Around this, basically, we are going to have a Faraday's cage. Remember, a Faraday's cage is a part of the MRI instrumentation. It is basically to prevent the external uh, radio frequency waves to disrupt our machine. All right. So this basically prevents any external radio frequency waves to interfere with the machine. Right. That is the uh, Faraday's. Cage. Apart from that, to uh, have such high magnetic strength, so you must be aware that we have uh, MRIs in the strengths of 1.5 Tesla, 3 Tesla. Now we also have up to 7 Tesla MRI machines for research purposes. To, so to achieve such high levels of magnetic fields, we are going to need superconductors, right? So we are going to have superconductors and for superconductors to function, we need to maintain very, very low temperatures which are maintained by circulating liquid helium right so liquid helium is also something which is a part of the mri machine right so two names that you can remember one is faraday's cage and we have liquid helium which is a part of the mri machine okay so you must have heard that a lot of the metallic objects are contraindicated right so very very general uh, uh, you know understanding that such high magnetic field we cannot have uh, metallic substances entering the magnetic field otherwise there would be a lot of damage so the various contraindications to mri include first very very important any bullets right so any bullet injury we can never do an mri the older uh, prosthetic walls right so the older cardiac prosthetic walls that we used to have which were made up of metal and the pacemakers which were there in the older times are all contraindicated However, the recent uh, devices are all becoming more and more MRI compatible. But for standard reference, remember, we want to rule these out. Dental implants are also a contraindication to MRI. What you do need to know, what are the implants which are safe? Right. So titanium is a uh, metal uh, which is actually MRI compatible. So this is how most of the orthopedic implants in today's time are actually made. Alright, so most of the orthopedic implants that we have in today's time are all made up of titanium and that is why these implants are actually safe and we can perform MRI in uh, titanium implants. Okay, apart from that breast implants are safe. Obviously, they are made up of silicon or saline and in fact, the investigation of choice to visualize these implants is only MRI. Okay, IUCD, so a copper T device is not a contraindication. Cholecystectomy clips are not a contraindication. The sternal sutures for a CABG surgery are not a contraindication. Pregnancy, MRI is absolutely safe except for first trimester where we do not know the safety results. So it's not FDA approved. Even the gadolinium contrast, remember, it's not FDA approved in pregnancy. Okay, so in pregnancy, we usually time the scan around 16 to 20 weeks, right? That is the best time that we should do an MRI in pregnancy. One, uh, so that we can pick up the congenital anomalies the best because the fetus is grown to a size where we can pick up the anomalies and this first trimester is also basically over. So usually in pregnancy, the timing of the MRI uh, and why an MRI is usually indicated is because of anomaly scan, right? So basically, if you want to confirm any congenital anomaly, MRI is something that we can go for in today's day and age. All right. So this is uh, about the contraindications and safety profile of MRI. Now, looking at the images, the clinical aspect of things. So, the first thing, because we have two cross-sectional modalities, one is CT, one is MRI. It's very important that you do not get confused between the two. Very simple, we studied in CT that the calcium is going to be white, right? It's going to be hyper-dense, bone is going to be hyper-dense. So, anytime you see if this is a brain section and you see that the bone, outer bone is hyper-dense, this is how a CT is going to appear, bones are white on a CT. Bones are going to be black, particularly the cortical bone, remember, is always going to be 
black and then mri it's always going to be hypo intense right because the cortical bone is very densely packed you do not have any signal which is generated okay do not confuse the bone with this outer rib which is nothing but the fat or basically the scalp fat that you have here and fat is something which is going to be always hyper intense okay whether it's t1 or it's t2 the variety of sequences we'll study it's always going to be white so do not confuse this white fat with the bone the bone is going to be inside it which is going to appear black the cortical bone is going to appear black so this is how we basically distinguish a ct scan and an mri okay